Welcome to the rocket profile of the Vanguard rocket, the Naval Research Lab's attempt to beat both the Soviets and von Braun to orbit. The Vanguard was less than half the mass of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency's Juno-1, which would launch Explorer-1, America's first satellite, and it was less than a twentieth of the launch mass of the Sputnik rocket, which launched the world's first satellite. Its first stage was a single X-405 engine burning kerosene and liquid oxygen to provide a vacuum thrust of 134.7 kilonewtons for 2 minutes and 25 seconds. At the surface, it had a specific impulse of 248 seconds, and it got 270 seconds ISP in vacuum. The second stage was known as the Delta A stage, or also known as the ABLE stage, and it featured one AJ-10-37 generating 33.8 kilonewtons with unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine and nitric acid as propellants. It had a burn time of 1 minute and 55 seconds and a vacuum ISP of 271 seconds. This was the origin of the ABLE stage and the Delta stage, which were eventually further developed for the Thor rocket, the Thor-Able and the Thor-Delta combinations later became known as just Delta, and as of the recording of this video, the latest version of the Delta stage with a more advanced AJ-10 is the second stage on the Delta II rocket. The final stage was known as Grand Central or ABL, and featured a solid rocket motor that was spin-stabilized by RCS on the Delta stage. The solid motor provided 11.56 kilonewtons for 31 seconds at a specific impulse of 230 seconds in vacuum. Vanguard had three successes and eight failures for a dismal success rate of 27.3%. Its first success was on March 17, 1958, five and a half months after Sputnik, with a 1.47 kilogram satellite. That was Vanguard 1, which was also the first solar powered satellite. It is still in orbit and will probably remain in orbit for another 150 years at least, but communication with it was lost in 1964. The heaviest payload lofted to orbit by Vanguard was the Vanguard 3 satellite, a 227 kilogram satellite which is also still in orbit. While it was far from a reliable launcher and was famously dubbed Kaputnik after the failure of Vanguard TV-3, which rose 1.2 meters before exploding, Vanguard was still a remarkable design in the race to orbit. Not only did it have a long legacy thanks to the Delta stage, but it was also much smaller than its competitors. That was largely because it was designed specifically for this purpose, rather than for launching warheads as the R-7 that launched Sputnik was, and also the Redstone rocket family from which the Juno-1 hailed from was. On that note, thank you for watching this rocket profile of the Vanguard rocket.